So let's start by opening a new copy of the software. And in this tutorial, we're going to be working with a design which is going to be larger than our machine's work area. Or it may be the fact that we also have smaller size material for a larger project. So I'm going to go to open an existing file and I'm going to navigate to the projects folder and I'm just going to open the large howling wolf toolpath CRV and just press open. Now if we look down the bottom left we'll be able to see the dimensions that we're going to be working with. So we're working with a width of 72 inches, a height of 48 inches and a depth of one and a half inches. So as you can see already that this is bigger than most CNC machines workable area. But there is a feature in the software called tiling which will allow us to actually build up uh, a larger project from smaller pieces. So first of all, let's tile the windows horizontally so we can actually see both the 2D view and the 3D view. And then just going to go over to the toolpaths and just preview what we're actually working with. So I'm just going to go to the preview toolpath form and then preview all the toolpaths. And as you can see, I've added a nice cutout pass here, and I've not added any tabs to this. Now the reason for this is so I can just double click on the background so it just leaves us with our remaining sign. So this just gives you a view of what we're working with. So this sign is made up pretty much of pocketing um, different areas between different shapes and also then uh, running a profile cut around all the text here with a V-bit tool to give it a nice beveled edge. So let's presume we've got a CNC machine which has a machine bed area of 24 inches by 24 inches. So how do we go about machining something that's 72 by 48? So there's a tool for that. So let's go to close the preview toolpath form. And in the toolpath operations, we'll find an option, tile toolpath. And all we do is we just simply click tile toolpath and that brings up the toolpath tiling manager. And the important thing to note about this toolpath tiling manager is that you can also work with anything that's in the background of this. Little window that I'm moving around at the moment. So if I wanted to, I could turn all the toolpaths on and it will show us at the moment all the toolpaths that are relevant to machining this big uh, project here. And it will still keep the toolpath tiling manager in view. Now the all important option here is this option here which is tile toolpath. If that's checked on like so, this then means that the software is now going to be creating uh, all different toolpaths dependent on your tile size which is all specified down here. Now at the moment the tile size is actually the full width and length of the actual project at the moment so it's picked that up from the material setup. And the toolpath tiling manager also gives us three different methods of actually organizing our tiles for machining. So we can have individual tiles which is if we have issues with size for say our machining area in both the x and y axis or we have the feed through in X and the feed through in Y. Now this normally is only ever used if we have some kind of restriction in either the X or the Y axis and we can then literally just feed through the material. So it's normally done for uh, mantle pieces like long and thin types of products that we may be making on a CNC machine. But because the machine that we're going to be using is 24 inches by 24 inches in the machinable area, we need to actually use this option at the top called the individual tiles. So let's just check that option and then we can go down and actually specify uh, the tile width and height that we need to use for our tiles. So I'm going to specify 24 by 24 in this. And at the moment nothing will happen until we hit this button here which says update tiles. Now you can just about see in the 2D view here that we have a T1. And that actually represents uh, tile 1 and that's because we haven't actually updated the tiles from when it was 72 by 48. So if we press update now, this 2D view will be then sectioned into different tiles Both the of 2D 24 view by and 24. the 3D view have been updated. So, we just press the so update in the 2D tiles, view we've now got the tile sections. So we've got T1, T2, T3, T4, T5 and T6. And in the 3D view we've currently got all the toolpaths that represent tile 1. Now we can tell that because tile 1 is the active uh, tile. Now you can tell that because it's got 
the T1 highlighted in red and also the active tile in the toolpath tiling manager also says tile 1. Now we can switch tiles uh, either by th using this drop down so we can go to tile 2 and as you'll see that everything that's uh, going to be toolpath in tile 2 will be shown in the 3D view and the T2 will be highlighted in red also in the 2D view. We can also change the tiles by just double clicking into the tile area and you'll see that in the 3D view as well all the toolpaths will also become selected for that as well. Now the 3D view doesn't exactly show us a realistic view of how the part is going to be machined in 24 by 24 pieces. So if I just zoom out a bit in the 3D view we'll see that the uh, X0, Y0 origin place is represented here in our 3D view but you'll also notice that when I actually change to different uh, tiles you'll notice that the XY origin position also stays the same essentially meaning that we are actually going to be uh, machining the full width and height of the product. Now the reason it sh shows it us in situ if you like is because there is an option in the toolpath tiling manager to allow us to draw toolpaths in the 3D view in the original position for visualization purposes only. So that's why when you uh, click on different tiles and it shows you the actual toolpaths that are going to be created, it shows you them as if that's the part that you're going to be creating of the product as a whole. If we turn off this option here, we will be able to actually just view the toolpaths on as if we actually had a 24 by 24 block of material. So if I just uncheck that and then we go to the preview toolpath form and then just reset that preview you'll see that now we've now got our own 24 by 24 block of material if you like and we can now go ahead and click around on all the different uh, tiles again and this time if you imagine that we've got now six blocks of 24 by 24 and these are the toolpaths that are going to be uh, placed upon them so just go around and I'll just show you all the toolpaths that are going to be for each of the tiles and we can even go ahead and preview all the toolpaths that are going to be cut into these pieces so just select them, preview them so you'll see that all the uh, toolpaths that are listed here are only representing the actual current tile that you actually have active at that particular moment in time. Now it's important to note that even if we do have this on for visualization purposes or not, it doesn't actually affect the X0, Y0 position of the actual tiles and the toolpaths that we actually uh, save out. The X0, Y0 will always be where we actually set it on the 24 by 24 block of material and it's going to, and it will be the same as for every block that we go to use uh, when doing all the toolpaths. Now there is another option available to us within the toolpath tiling manager and that is the tile overlap. Now what this does is it allows us to have our toolpaths overlap into the next tile by whatever amount you specify in this box. Now you may want to do this for a number of reasons. You may be using special shape tools which use all or part of the diameter of the tool and may need to overcut to achieve the effect you require from the tool. You may also want to overcut slowly so that you can then run a profile pass cutting back to the tile size so to achieve demonstrate perfectly this. sized so let's tiles which will help a when tile we piece this project together. Inch. And let's just press to update the tiles there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to preview the tool pass for tile 1 and let's just do that there and then if I turn on all the tool pass we should be able to then see that past the actual material uh, size we'll see that the toolpath has been extended past the actual material set size and this is your tile overlap. So now we're happy with the way our tiles are looking at the moment what we can do is we can start thinking about saving out our toolpaths so let's close the preview toolpath form and let's go into save toolpaths and you'll notice that we have an option here that says output tile toolpath now other than this it works in the same way as saving ordinary toolpaths so if we've got output all visible toolpaths to one file we are still going to get the error uh, because we are using multiple tools within this 
uh, all these toolpaths. So I may just want I can then output toolpaths that are using the same tool together to just untick some of these so and then I can stick all the clearance ones together. So I've got those selected and then I can just find our post processor, click the save button and then I can just give these a name. So pocket all and then in brackets I'm just going to put clear because that's going to be my clearance path and just press save. I've just pressed save again, it will show us all of the tool paths that it's saved out for. So what this has done is this has condensed the pocket one, pocket two, pocket three all into the one tool path and then it's divided that tool path up into six segments to represent each of our tiles that we've got. So for each tool path that we actually save out we're actually going to get six tool paths to actually run on the machine. So each one of these will represent one of our tiles. And we just go ahead and do that for the rest of the tool paths that we've got. And also, obviously, if we can use the same tool, we can just do that again. Before we go to run it on the machine, we can just save our work, just to make sure that if we need to edit any of our tool paths that we've created, we can go back and then edit those. So I'm just going to change this to tool path and then press save on that. And with your work saved, that now completes all the areas for this tutorial. If you're interested to find out more about the feed-through options, there is also a tutorial for that, which is demonstrated on a 3D carved mantelpiece. That's all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.